Hello and good day to you. Uh, my name is Dr. Ryan Tucker and I'm from the Department of Earth Sciences. Uh, it's within the Faculty of Science here at Stellenbosch University. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we do uh, within uh, the Department of Earth Sciences and also some of uh, what you may expect as an incoming student if you do choose to pursue a uh, future career within the Earth Sciences. But before we get into the nitty gritty, uh, I'd like to start off with a quote that I love uh, from a cult movie, The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, Morgan Freeman, a prisoner, uh, talks about one of his uh, cellmates. And it talks about geology in terms of time and pressure. Now, the Earth is roughly about 4.6 billion years old. And as geologists or scientists, we look back into that record and we find that basically the amount of time for an event to occur coincides with pressure. And so whether these events like a volcanic eruption in a day, uh, a fault strike uh, that went on for a decade or two, or the shift of a continent over a millennia, all of these come down to these key variables. Now, why is this even uh, applicable, uh, even to a day-to-day -day basis such as uh, our lives? And what we find is that the application of time and pressure relates to our environments, our ecosystems. Um, many of you have seen in the news, the media, or YouTube, or even talked in your class about climate change. Now, climate change happens on Earth. It's an Earth process. It's happened throughout Earth's history. Uh, there's been periods when Earth was covered by ice and periods that there was no polar ice caps whatsoever. However, sadly, humans have had a detrimental effect. We are actually speeding up. We're changing the processes that naturally occur on Earth. And so as geoscientists, uh, both uh, environmental and applied, we look to ways that we can resolve this. We look to ways that we can actually approach this uh, raising issue and actually remedy the situation, come up with ways that we can more sustainably uh, live on Earth and, and provide our future generations with a meaningful life. Now that's a big pill to swallow. So first of all, you may be wondering, well, you know, 4.6 billion years is great, but where's the job? Where's the money? Well, the nice thing is, is that to tackle these problems in that amount of time of, of Earth's history and then apply them even to the future means that you incorporate a lot of disciplines, chemistry, physics, mathematics, geography, a lot of these different uh, programs or these, these uh, philosophies or disciplines, we incorporate into geology to actually bring this information together. Now, some of the jobs you may know, mining. We, we go out, we identify and extract certain minerals from the earth, gold, coal, uh, say the materials that are running your cell phone or your computer that you're watching this video on are directly from this or start out as a, a mining commodity. But what you may not know is geology may actually do the finance part of it. So some of your major um, financiers look for geologists that can deal with commodities. So if a gold mine opens or closes, how is that going to affect the price of gold on a Monday versus a Friday? Um, maybe you're more into engineering. So geoengineering looks at maybe hazards. Uh, if you build a road, you need to understand the stability of the substrate uh, below it. Uh, or if there's a hillside right next to it, say that that rock is weak and it may fail causing landslides that may damage the road. Other aspects include paleontology, my own discipline, understanding life's history on Earth, uh, going from a trilobite to a tyrannosaur. How did the ecosystems, how did, how did they live within those environments preserved within the rock? Water. Uh, coming from South Africa and especially the Western Cape and, and droughts, you know, how can we responsibly use uh, reservoirs or body of water uh, that is more meaningful and uh, create possibilities for future generations to live within these areas and not have to deal with uh, the major drought that we had to recently. And then on the other side, uh, a little bit more of environmental aspects of geology you may look at, uh, maybe working with agriculture and farmers. Uh, you know, certain crops grow within certain clays or soils. Uh, and so with this, we find that you can actually look at the chemistry of the soil and predict, you know, better crop uh, yields, you know, affecting the price of the crop and the output. 
What about mine reclamation? Um, as an environmentalist, you may go into a mine and actually reclaim that land, uh, give it new life and uh, clean it up from the actual mining process that actually take place. So, so many, many aspects bring in this kind of multidisciplinary aspect of, of science. And, and as we like to call it, we're jack of all trades. We know a little bit about different sciences and we were able to use that to answer questions. Now the student profile that we find uh, within our department is ever changing. Uh, classically, we we're defined as, as crusty guys with beards that love the outdoors. And you know, this might be true for some, it's definitely changing. Uh, the student profile is, is bringing about a revolution within geosciences, especially within the incorporation of, of technical aspects, including, including computational and chemical aspects. So looking at uh, satellite imagery from Mars, uh, students who were involved with NASA to describe the paleo environments of the rocks on Mars, and that was utilizing that technology. And so this ever-changing diversity and demographics of students that are coming into our department are tackling these major issues of climate change and describing even climates on other planets. Now, the demographics for our staff is very similar. It's very cosmopolitan. Uh, all of our researchers hold PhDs from various global institutions. Uh, they have chosen to come here to Stellenbosch University to lecture and research within this wonderful uh, facility with uh, basically global impact uh, that we have, ranging from our head of department, Alex Kisters, uh, dealing with tectonics, uh, Ella Kendry Roychowry, dealing with uh, some of the trace metals and oceanic waters near Antarctica, and even, um, say, my own research dealing with fossil deposits of uh, the Eurasia and Gondwana. Now to mention, just to say that we are one of the top uh, geological departments in South Africa, both geologically and environmentally. And so you would be at the cutting edge of the forefront of the science. Now some of that research takes place uh, here in Sub-Saharan Africa, ranging from South Africa, Namibia, Tanzania, and then actually expands globally. We have projects, uh, Mongolia, Thailand, uh, Europe, uh, Brazil, Argentina, and then North America and Europe. So our, our footprint in terms of collaborations is very broad and the opportunities for students to actually become incorporated within this is actually um, readily there. Now the actual focus of some of these researches ranges uh, economically from uh, gold deposits, palladium, uh, to looking at uh, circulation at depth of the ocean profiles, to even uh, assessing new satellite imagery and bringing that in to assess how land change uh, has morphed uh, during farming in the Karoo. But I, I cannot understate the importance of the incorporation of technology into the geosciences. Uh, it's been revolutionary for our science. You know, we were originally a field discipline, but now with bringing in computers, satellites, uh, and, and really rigorous uh, technological advances, including, let's say, the mass spectrometry. We are able to ascertain even more information uh, from the rocks than before. And so the accuracy of the stories, the accuracy of the science increases, and we are able to see deeper into the story that is preserved in Earth's rock record. And we have many labs within the Department of Earth Sciences, ranging from geochemistry uh, to modeling, uh, to even uh, just a, a petrol or experimental petroleum laboratory. And all of these have uh, both global applications and uh, global uh, collaborations. And here are some of them. Our department uh, boasts collaborations from around the world, from institutions and industry. Uh, so all of these play a role in our active research portfolio which actually is, is a benefit to you because as a student incoming both graduate and undergraduate level, you'll be able to take part in these networks, these global communities of scientists that will help you succeed in developing skill sets to become successful geoscientists. And a lot of this is supported through various foundations, uh, grant bodies, including uh, the National Research Foundation here in South Africa, and then some, some of our projects are actually uh, by the National Science Foundation in North America. But that's us. What about you? What about you as a student? You'll start off with a three-year degree, uh, BSc, 
And this is split into streams. We have an applied earth science stream and a geo-environmental stream. Now, both of these streams have core classes that you have to take for those certain topics. And then you actually have a mix of electives that you can choose to take uh, based on your varied interests. Now, a little bit more detail about that. We find that um, your first year here within the Department of Earth Sciences is rooted in developing a foundation. And so you get a little introductory into earth sciences, but this is complemented by other science classes, including chemistry, physics, mathematics, and computational sciences. Now in your second year, you get to actually specialize a little bit more. This is when you start honing in on either uh, geochemistry or physical geology, looking at tectonics. And this is developing that kind of firm foundation for you to understand the principal ideas of uh, geosciences and processes they're in. And then your third year is when you, you really get into those special topics. So um, water testing, uh, geochemistry, hydrology, uh, looking at sedimentology or even tectonics and igneous or volcanic eruptions. And so the nitty gritty uh, specific details of each discipline within uh, earth sciences. And then with this, we get beautiful opportunities to take you guys out to the field. So as students, you get to go to Lanesburg uh, to look at 300 to 350 million year old geological events of continents slamming together. You get to go out to Table Bay and Falls Bay and test water and look at how humans have had an impact within those ecosystems and a whole suite of various other field trips uh, that we try to get you on. Uh, and this is complemented by some computer-based uh, classes as well, looking at GIS modeling um, uh, from planet Earth. Now, in a postgraduate uh, setting, this starts off with honors. Honors is basically a year-long uh, project and course-based. Now, the nice thing about our postgraduate work at all levels, so honors, PhD, and masters, uh, these are supported normally by bursaries, uh, either through grants, uh, funding bodies, or even uh, um, commercial entities and economic bodies. So basically, we bring these uh, partners in, uh, we work with them hand in hand, and then they actually support your studies. Now, in honors, uh, again, is split between two streams. We have an applied geology, more hard rock, um, economic, sedimentary, uh, igneous, tectonics, and then the environmental stream is more looking at, it, at environments, climates, uh, both past, present, and future. And then we kind of mix the class up a little bit and bring both streams together uh, in a mix of elective classes uh, that kind of brings and makes linkages between those two streams. Now our MSc and PhD uh, programs are heavily rooted in research. Uh, you start off by presenting a uh, project proposal, uh, which is approved by the department and uh, faculty of science. And thereafter you start on your thesis or dissertation respectively. And then once that is completed, you will actually defend. Now these projects range from assessing new dinosaur deposits in Utah to uh, looking at dust particles that are surrounding Namibia or Antarctica uh, to actually uh, rewriting historical geological literature. Um, basically, you work hand in hand as a researcher with our staff and try to assess or actually answer questions that are at the forefront of our science currently. So what does this mean for you? This is all great and wonderful, but at the end of the day, where does this take you? Well, living on planet Earth, we are affected by planet Earth. And, and basically, our field of science is applicable anywhere on Earth. And so if you want to stay domestically and help uh, maybe clean up the coal uh, processes within South Africa, the door is open to you. If you want to take advantage of assessing uh, coral environments uh, within the Great Barrier Reef and how that may affect uh, the longevity of, of the environments, that door is open to you. Uh, if you want to go mine coal or tar sands uh, within Canada, that door is open to you. Basically, our department facilitates a skill set that is not only applicable to geoscientists, but you can actually take our degree and actually change majors, maybe go into geoengineering. 
and assess uh, site uh, information for buildings. So what we do is actually very applicable to a broad array of uh, multidisciplinary studies. The last thing I'd like to mention is our outreach. A very uh, important aspect of our department is not only bringing students in uh, from various backgrounds and, and uh, schools from around the area, but we also go out uh, into those schools and discuss uh, not only ideas of earth sciences, but actually get them into real science. Uh, you may have heard the term citizen science. This is where we actually take people from the community and have them collect data that is used by scientists around the world. And then you as a student may take part uh, either undergraduately or graduately with this. So we like to see the involvement of the community, uh, not only within just a popular science, but also gathering the data itself and bringing it together. Now, I appreciate your attention. I know that was a lot to take in. So if you have any questions at all, I invite you to visit our website at the Faculty of Sciences page. Just go to Departments, we are Earth Sciences, and feel free to write uh, any of the department people, especially our head of department, Alex Kisters, if you have any further questions or comments. And hopefully, if we have excited you enough, uh, we will welcome you within the Chamber of Minds uh, very soon. Have a wonderful day.